नमस्ते क्लास वेलकम एवरी वन सुन विल स्टार्ट द क्लास एंड टुडे विल बिगिन द क्लास विथ सम क्वेश्चन हमी के क्वेश्चन हे पैला देन आफ्टर विल रीड बारोमीटर्स एंड सीरिंज बारोमीटर्स डिवाइसेस डिजाइन टू मेजर द एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेसर सो विल रीड टू टाइप्स अफ बारोमीटर वन इज लिक्विड बारोमीटर कल मर्करी बारोमीटर and the next is uh, you know aneroid barometer the meaning of aneroid is uh, liquidless that is non liquid fluidless so that barometer consists of you know elastic metal box and that elastic metal box and named as aneroid cell so by the name of that aneroid cell in barometer the whole device okay uh, name is aneroid barometer that is used to measure the atmospheric pressure that is also used as altimeter Altimeter to find the height. Okay, that the airplane is flying in the sky. So let's just start. Are ready, students? Okay, be ready, please. So now next week, so we'll conclude this lesson. So you can see the questions on your screen. Uh, this is the first question. The question number one. The question is the weight of an object is sixty-five newton in year. The weight of the object in water is uh, forty newton. So according to the given information now you have to answer the questions given below so last time we discussed similar questions in the diagram but today i have brought the questions in language so orally you can say the answer uh, quickly you can respond to the answer what is the up thrust given by water question number 1 now tell me the value of up thrust Given by water, twenty-five yeah, newton. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, twenty-five newton. Thank you so much. Yes, correct answer. The weight in here is sixty-five newton, and weight of object in what is forty newton. And obviously, sixty-five minus forty, okay, is twenty-five. Now let's go to question number two. What is the weight of displaced water then? Answer of question number two. What is the weight of displaced water? Number one answer. We told twenty-five newton. Okay, our thrust given water is twenty-five newton. It's time to give the answer of question number two. Same twenty-five newton. Yeah, pl uh, please, please uh, read the question carefully first. Okay, so what is the weight of displaced displaced water? Please, uh, you can again spell the answer, please. Yeah, yeah, sir, you are correct. Okay, excellent. The same answer in question number two also. uh that is 25 newton uh because uh you yeah, have 25 newton okay because according to archimedes principle so when we immerse a body it gets up thrust that is equal to the weight of displaced liquid so up thrust must be equal to weight of displaced water okay or up thrust is equal to weight of displaced water so number one also 25 newton and according to archimedes principle uh, number 2 also uh, 25 newton uh, let's go to number 3 then what is the real weight of an object 45 newton correct uh, ah yes 65 newton correct good thank you yes dennis you are correct very good 65 newton okay that weight of object in year means uh, real weight now number 4 there is certain condition oh. so if the object is made to float on water now you have to tell the apparent weight apparent weight of that object and apparent weight of that object means weight of the object in water at that time so uh, above questions okay number 1 2 questions and the above questions uh, tell that the body is sinking and if we change that body change that object okay by changing its volume or decreasing density if you make that body float on water at the time what will be the weight of that object in water apparent weight yes sir of correct zero very good yes zero newton okay number four answer is zero newton please this is the concept because whenever a body floats on liquid the weight of that body in liquid is zero because the 
the real weight is always equal to up thrust okay so when a body experiences up thrust that is equal to its own weight then only the body floats on liquid means the real weight is equal to up thrust that is equal to you know weight of displaced water means and for this body if the real weight is 65 newton this body must displace 65 newton of water okay at the time then the apparent weight will be zero got it now let's go to another question please uh, try to calculate these equations in the copy and tell me the answer so for calculating this question uh, you'll get two minutes time only one question calculate the up thrust from the given diagram so please uh, get an idea so you have concept and the body is uh, fully immersed in water that means the total volume of body uh, is equal to volume of displaced water it is completely immersed okay no any part of the body is out of the water this two minutes time i uh, try to solve it try garata class 10 so the medium is water body is immersed inside the water and you can see okay different heights are given as six meter and two meter so up to some surfaces and let's say faces of the body and two meter square is the cross sectional area of the body so six meter is the height up to lower face of the body from the free surface of water and two meter is another height uh, up to upper face of the body from uh, you know free surface of water that means uh, s2 is a six meter s1 is two meter and you know s2 minus s1 is always h uh, which is the height of a body so the diagram okay gives in the equations you are given cross sectional area of body as two meter square and you find height of that body and the product of area and height uh, you will get the volume and in this case the total volume of the body is equal to the volume of displaced water and you know the format to find up thrust okay one minute please got this away try got up please question ma deko given condition haru pahila list kara ke ke deko cha ani question le ke so deko cha tes pachi kun formula use garda khari yo so deko quantity niskin cha bhanera a suitable formula use garera answer nikala you have to find up thrust so given by the water uh, to that body so got an idea la bhana ta class 10 so yes saurav thank you so much excellent brand yes correct answer the thrust given by water to that body is a uh, 78400 newton okay the value of g small g uh, you can put 9.8 9.8 meter per second square and you know the density of water in si the density of water in si is 1000 kg per meter cube formula for finding up thrust is u equal bdz and this body is completely immersed means that volume of a body is equal to volume of displaced liquid and how to find volume uh, 6 minus 2 is 4 meter that is height of body 2 meter square is area so area into height okay that is 4 into 2 so 4 into 8 8 meter cube so volume of displaced liquid is equal to 8 meter cube uh, density of water d is equal to 1000 kg per meter cube okay and then uh, the value of small g uh, is 9.8 meter per second square so u equal bdz u is equal to bdz is the equation so you can use here right then 8 into 1000 into 9.8 uh, 78400 newton got it okay okay now uh, let's enter uh, to the topic that we are going to read today ready strengths got with you are you go mathematics got you got you numerical problem got you because that is very simple problem uh, today we are going to read uh, devices that are used to measure atmospheric pressures and slightly we will talk about the applications of atmospheric pressure 
means the topics we are going to deal today are barometer two types of barometer one is liquid barometer another non liquid and liquid barometer is a particular name as mercury barometer okay in that barometer uh, mercury is used and then next number two is aneroid so aneroid cell and that is also called capsule c a p s u l e capsule so because of the aneroid cell or capsule in that barometer it is named as aneroid barometer it is liquidless means this barometer does not contain liquid and the application uh, so we'll uh, discuss about the structure and working of syringe so how does atmospheric pressure so help in the functioning of syringe let's start uh, with the first okay barometer a uh, unit strength barometer is an instrument that is used to measure the atmospheric pressure okay at different places so if you really like to find the atmospheric pressure of place so we can take a device called barometer and there are two types of barometer strengths uh, one is mercury barometer and the second one is aneroid barometer so first we will read about mercury barometer so you can see uh, the figure of mercury barometer shown so on your screen if you go to uh, just know the parts of mercury barometer the major part you can see a uh, glass tube and that glass tube is about 1 meter long you can see in the picture that is labeled as okay 29.92 uh, it is 29.92 inch 29.92 inch means it is about 1 meter this one so one part of mercury barometer is glass tube so which is completely filled with mercury and later it is uh, kept in a reservoir so in upside down uh, next part uh, is a reservoir so that is the stories of a liquid a uh, mercury and that uh, tube glass tube which is about 1 meter long uh, is a uh, graduated that is calibrated that is marked okay with the uh, numerical value so in terms of you know millimeter of hg that is a uh, millimeter of mercury Uh, one unit to measure atmospheric pressure is mmhg and since in this device a uh, mercury is used okay so that the tube is labeled a uh, graduated so in terms of mmhg so you can find okay or you can study the atmospheric pressures of a place so by just uh, observing the label of a mercury so to the uh, mark or less numerical value of the uh, glass tube so mercury barometer uh, consists of graduated glass tube so which is about 1 meter long or less a high and that is closed at one end and open okay in another end and the open end uh, is uh, that is a uh, placed so into the reservoir so whereas a uh, closed end uh, is at the upper part and due to the weight of the mercury okay since okay that the uh, tube is filled with mercury so when we place mercury so inverted in the reservoir and due to the weight of mercury so certain vacuum is created okay at the upper uh, end of the tube and that vacuum is called todecilen vacuum so before placing the tube in the reservoir the tube is fully filled with mercury but while placing that tube filled with mercury okay inverted into the reservoir and the, some of the mercury flows out and due to its weight and that some okay reason is left empty and that reason is called vacuum it is especially called todecilen vacuum okay and the mercury barometer is invented by the scientist evangelista torricelli and by his name the vacuum is a name to reason in vacuum so when we put mercury barometer at a place and according to the change in atmospheric pressure so it shows the value of atmospheric pressure of that place if the external atmospheric pressure or let's say the pressure exerted by atmosphere of the surrounding is higher is more 
and definitely the pressure or force pushes the mercury into the tube means the mercury level rises okay up to the glass tube and shows the higher value of atmospheric pressure and if the external atmospheric pressure decreases okay that means the pressure inside the tube is more than the outer pressure and obviously the liquid flows out that means the mercury level uh, just falls down and it shows the decrease in pressure so when we take mercury barometer to lower altitude uh, let's say to sea level and obviously that is the place where the atmospheric pressure is maximum and you can see okay the mercury uh, rises up uh, showing the greater value okay of atmospheric pressure and at sea level the value is about 760 mm hg you did understood now let's go to another barometer the strength this is aneroid barometer so what is aneroid barometer so in short we can say okay this barometer looks like a clock looks like a watch so it is a circular and especially made of okay brass a clock like instrument and that has an indicator that indicator points the you know that is the correct value of atmospheric pressures okay of a place so aneroid barometer is a circular brass clock like instrument with a sweep indicator so you can see the needle shape structure that is called indicator so we shows the value of atmospheric pressure and it's always shows the you know current atmospheric pressures wherever you place the aneroid barometer or even that mercury barometer that always shows the you know that is a recent or current atmospheric pressure and it is aneroid barometer so why is it named aneroid barometer because the major part of this barometer is aneroid cell so the functioning or the major feature okay of the part that the aneroid barometer has and due to that part so it is named as aneroid barometer and the name of that part is called aneroid cell okay it is also called capsule right and that aneroid cell or capsule that is made of metal and from inside okay it is uh, evacuated means the air of the metal box uh, called aneroid cell or capsule is it is taken out means the partial vacuum is created inside the aneroid cell so which is the major component of aneroid barometer yeah that is the ex and that is expansion and contraction that is the movement of that part okay that part means aneroid cell also called capsule so which is evacuated is it and shows the change in pressure and gives the uh, current atmospheric pressure so aneroid cell uh, is a capsule which is a small flexible metal box and that is okay alloy that is made of uh, beryllium and copper the mixture of beryllium and copper so mix of alloy so which is used to okay make a flexible that is thin metal box are fitted inside the aneroid barometer called aneroid cell or another name is capsule okay. and this device is used in uh, you know that is reading for weather conditions means to uh, measure pressure and by observing the yes pressures of atmosphere then we can predict some weather forecasting means the meteorological uh, that is station it is used and uh, scuba diving and it is also used in you know vehicles boats even your crafts so previously i said in the beginning of class this aneroid barometer is also used as altimeter altimeter means to find the height okay if you really uh, can uh, measure the atmospheric of place and according to that uh, you can easily guess the height of a place because atmospheric pressure changes with the height changes with the altitude okay and then atmospheric pressure is inversely proportional to altitude with the increase in height of the pressure decrease Yes. Now let's go to some more. Okay, about aneroid barometer. Let's talk about the working uh, mechanism of aneroid barometer. So in this slide, so you can see on the screen, uh, so the internal structure. Okay, that in the previous slide we saw, okay, that the external appearance of the aneroid barometer. So how does it look? And I'm showing. another figure that so the internal parts okay there are many parts 
in aneroid diameter and the major part is aneroid cell uh, this part okay this is metal box this part is aneroid cell you can see okay one part is there is spring okay this metal spring it is flat metal spring so which supports the, uh, this capsule or aneroid cell or simply a metal box isn't it to uh, that means this spring uh, protects this uh, metal box okay named aneroid cell from collapsing because uh, this metal box is flexible and it okay continuously expands and contracts according to the change in atmospheric pressure and further this metal box is fitted with liver liver system so by the movement of which you know the chain this metal chain or you can say spring moves uh, that is rolled in a pulley this is pulley and when this pulley is moved or rolled by the let's say moving of this chain there's at last the pointer moves and pointer is there with the uh, let's say graduated scale and it shows okay that numerical value of atmospheric pressure if the pressure is more and obviously the pointer uh, indicates the okay great value of atmospheric pressure and at the pressure is low obviously it shows the low pressure so the parts in aneroid barometer are first aneroid cell okay next is, that is middle spring and at in third you can see liver okay then in fourth you can see chain a uh, pointer and then finally the graduated scale or it is called ring graduated ring these are the parts of aneroid barometer then how does aneroid barometer work okay let's talk about it so aneroid barometer functions it works by the contraction and expansion of capsule so i repeat okay capsule is also called aneroid cell so by the contraction and relaxation or let's say expansion of aneroid cell isn't it that gives the uh, different atmospheric pressure of course you know place this part this part is the major part called capsule aneroid cell a metal box that is made of alloy of beryllium and copper you know when the atmospheric pressure increases that uh, you know contracts the capsule okay and by the contraction of capsule definitely it moves the lever and slowly that it moves the pointer and shows you know high atmospheric pressure and when the atmospheric pressure okay decreases and this metal box called capsule that expands and again it moves the lever and the pointer indicates the you know minimum or low air pressure so a small changes in atmospheric pressure causes the capsule to expand or contract you know so how does an aneroid barometer work it works by the contraction and expansion of aneroid cell also called capsule then how does a capsule contract and expand so by the changes in atmospheric pressure right and the expansion or contraction of lever so that it uh, displays or it shows or the pointer indicates the different value of atmospheric pressures at current time you understand okay and then let me go to another slide students so let's review one more time this is another diagram showing the internal structure of aneroid barometer you know this part this is called aneroid cell you know this structure is called metal spring okay that supports the aneroid cell that protects the aneroid cell from collapsing and this whole system is lever okay the lever moves and this part is called again spring and it is pulley and finally it is okay pointer and this part is called a ring so where do we find different numerical value yes so contraction and expansion of aneroid cell so moves the lever so lever moves the spring that is uh, fitted with the pulley and when the pulley rolls or moves and it moves the pointer yes and the, in high atmospheric pressure definitely pointer shows the so high value of atmospheric pressure bujin sir class 10 hmm. okay let's uh, now connect to the application of atmospheric pressure so the by use of atmospheric pressure Uh, there is strange different devices are designed 
and today we will read only about syringes. As I am in syringes, we are going to read only about syringes. Applications of atmospheric pressure. Number one, syringes. You can see on the screen the pictures, okay, of syringes and some that uh, informations about the syringes. What is a syringe? Uh, it is a simple form uh, that contains a plunger. A yeah, plunger means uh, you know piston. Plunger means piston. This part, okay, this part, or you can say this black part. So which can be moved in and out. It can be in and pull out. So the, by moving the piston, you know, in and out. So we can. Uh, that means uh, let's say uh, keep medicines or liquid into the body, and even take out the blood from the body. So this is used for both purposes, you know, for uh, giving in the liquid or medicines and taking out the blood or any liquid like that. So a syringe is a simple pump consisting of a plunger that fits tightly in a tube. Okay, this tube is called barrel. You know, this is this part is called barrel. That the outer part, hollow part, is called barrel. So which is graduated. Uh, you can see, okay, the graduated that indicates the volume of liquid. So 0.1, 1, 1.5 like that ml, and uh, this is a part here. Okay, this needle. Okay, this needle is used to penetrate, so up to the layer of skin uh, that is below, you know, epidermis. The outer layer of skin is epidermis, and since uh, it is penetrated up to the middle layer that is called hypodermis, it is so pointed. Okay, so sharp, so it can go into the body. That is, so why this needle is called hypodermic needle. This needle is called hypodermic needle, and the needle fits okay at the uh, let's say the anterior part, the first part of this syringe, or uh, this part, okay this part is called nozzle, nozzle, and another uh, which is graduated, uh, which is calibrated. So where do we can see the numerical value, and that helps us to know the volume of liquid, a uh, volume of blood here, this hollow part into which a uh, piston is fitted. Uh, this is called barrel. Okay, the first part is hypodermic needle based on this needle, and the hypodermic needle that fits in this, you know, the front part of the syringe called nozzle, and the major part, the big part of the syringe is called barrel. Uh, that is the storage cylinder. Another now functional part is called plunger. That is called you know piston. So by the movement of piston, uh, a syringe works. Okay, majorly the syringe works by the help of atmospheric pressure. Okay, these are the structures of a syringe. Uh, let's go to the uh, working of syringe, please. So, how does it work, students? So, when we okay pull the plunger, so out of the syringe, when we pull this part called Piston, this part, piston or plunger. So outside the syringe, then what happens inside the barrel? Okay, that is the phenomenon. Of course, due to which atmospheric pressure helps, okay, to uh, just uh, force the liquid go inside the syringe. And the phenomenon that occurs inside the barrel when we pull piston outside is. The partial vacuum is created. Partial vacuum is created when you pull this part called piston, okay, out of the syringe, and partial vacuum. That means the uh, you know low air pressure. Vacuum means less air pressure uh, is created inside that. Means now the pressure inside the syringe, okay, decreases. Means becomes lower than the outer atmospheric pressure. And the pressure in this part is more, and the pressure inside the syringe is less. And you know, a substance always moves, okay, from a high pressure to low pressure. So, in which directions does air blow? You know, air always blows from its higher pressure to low pressure. As we pull piston out of the barrel, out of the syringe. Okay, that creates the partial vacuum inside the barrel, means decreases the air pressure, and then okay, that makes the air pressure outside the syringe more, and that air pressure pushes the liquid, okay, or medicine into the syringe. That means 
by creating partial vacuum inside the barrel okay when the piston is pulled out the liquid flows into the barrel okay and the second phenomenon is there so when the plunger now pushed okay after filling the syringe with the medicines or with any liquid then we push okay so that uh, that the medicine can go into our body i right? can enter into the body so we, when we push a piston inward okay into the barrel then it creates high pressure inside the syringe inside the barrel and this time the pressure out of the syringe is low becomes low okay and the pressure inside the syringe becomes more or the high and the liquid now moves from a syringe into okay body or some other parts like that so pulling piston out okay the liquid blow, goes into the syringe medicine okay goes into the syringe and pushing a piston okay inward that means into the barrel that means now the medicine okay expels you know out of the syringe and this way okay our syringe works and it works by the help of atmospheric pressure bujin chai piston la baira tanda khari okay syringe bhitra air pressure kam huncha vacuum nai create huncha jasle gadar baira ko pressure badi huncha ani tei pressure le ke garcha liquid lai push garcha ani liquid ke huncha yo needle hudai athwa nozzle hudai a syringe bhitra fill huncha ani jab hamle syringe fill garchau okay liquid le medicine le aba hami push garcha ni ani push garda kheri ke huncha ta bhitra ko pressure यो बारल भित्र को प्रेसर बढ़ी हो बाहर कम होसले न लिक्विड मुव्स फ्रम सीरिंज टू द बडी तर इन एंड आउट को हाई सो इन एंड आउट को तिमें प्रोसेस फिर मैंने बुझे सो यू कैन इजिल अंडरस्टैंड द वकिंग मेकानिजम सीरिंज ओके सीरिंज यूज एज द पर्पज अफ इंजेक्टिंग मेडिशन इवन यू नो टेकिंग ट्रांसफ्यूजन द ब्लड फ्रम द बडी बुझी आफ्टर रिडिंग दिस प्लेस फर सम मिनट्स ओके एक दुई मिनट हमें कई क्वेश्चन डिस्कस कर प्लिज हे तो एक्चुअली क्लास टेन फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन छ व्हाट इज स्टैंडर्ड एटमोस्फेयर प्रेसर ओरली कसले एन्सर भन्न सकता हाई ये क्वेश्चन को एंसर द एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेसर एक्जर्टेड ऑन द सी वेरी गुड वेरी गुड एट सी लेवल राइट ओके वेरी गुड यस नाउ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर टू प्लिज मेन्सन द वैल्यू अफ स्टैंडर्ड एटमोस्फेयर प्रेसर इन एनी यूनिट यू कैन से जो यूनिट में भाई हाई द सेकेंड नंबर क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द वैल्यू अफ स्टैंडर्ड एटमोस्फेरिक प्रेसर कति भाई अर्थ सर्फेस में मैक्सिमम एयर प्रेसर कैसे रहे एटमोस्फेयर प्रेसर दट इज अबाउट सेवेन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एम एम एच जी हाई हजर हजर यस यस यू कैन से यस दैट इज वन पोइंट जीरो वन इंटू टेन टू दवर फाइव पासकल गुड हाई पासकल में वन पोइंट जीरो वन इंटू टेन पावर फाइव पासकल भो अभी एम एम एचजी में सेवन हंड्रेड सिक्सटी एम एम एचजी भो अटमोस्फेयर वन एटमोस्फेयर हो लड नंबर क्वेश्चन में जाऊँ क्लास टेन व्हाट इज बारोमीटर इंस्ट्रुमेंट यूज टू मेजर एयर प्रेसर आ यस वेरी इज थैंक यू सो मच एक्चुअल नाउ नंबर फोर में जाऊँ व्हाट इज एंड्रोइड सेल मेड अफ अफ एंड्रोइड सेल के बने एलोए हो यो ये मेटल बक्स हो है के एलिमेंट्स को नाम लेखे थे अगि एलोए अफ ए बीई भलिमेंट थी बीई बने बेरिलियम अर्क सीयू भाई दैट इज कपर हाई इट इज मेड अफ बेरिलिम एंड कपर ओके इट इज अ मेटल बक्स यस गुड थैंक यू यस करेक्ट एंसर फाइनली लास्ट नंबर क्वेश्चन फाइव ओके व्हाट इज अ सीरिंज द सीरिंज कस्त डिभाइस हो सीरिंज इज अ पंप दैट हेज ये पंप हो सीरिंज पंप हो राइट दैट हेज पिस्टन हाई जिस हमने प्लंजर भाई थे सीरिंज इज अ पम्प दैट हेज पिस्टन ओके फिटेड विथ अ ट्यूब अंदर ट्यूब लाइन हमें बारल भाम बना थे हाई सीरिंज को जो ट्यूब थे ट्यूब लाइन हमें बारल बना थे अभी पिस्टन लाइन प्लंजर बना थे अभी अरुण पार्ट हो नोजल अभी हाइपोडर्मिक निडल बना थे बुझी हाई ल आज ल्लास टेन ये नहीं अस पच्चीस बाकी ओके हमें अर्क हफ्ता चाहिए लेसन सकता हाई अब दुईटा मत पढ़ना बाकी तर इयर पम्प अर्क वाटर पम्प तो पढ़ी सके हम कई क्वेश्चन डिस्कस कर सौ अभी केमिस्ट्री में जो कई सदा क्लास टेन लिमार आपके सेल्फ स्टडी मजा कराई है अब कर आज ये नई थैंक यू सो मच 
okay class 10 and have a nice day nice time bye bye everybody